you guys are in for a big treat with the Batman. This is going to be my video review for the Batman. You can read my written review which will be in the description below. There's going to be a link to discussing film where I wrote up my review. But without further ado, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future Batman or DCEU videos on the channel. Over the next few days, I'm going to have more Batman related content. There is going to be an ending explainer video and a video where I'm going to be speculating about the future of this Matt Reeves Robert Pattinson Batman world and if there's going to be a sequel. But also hopefully today there will be a new video later on where I will rank all the Batman films. So hopefully you guys are ready for lots of Batman coverage. But for now let's go into the review. So I was lucky enough to see the Batman very early on. I saw it over three weeks ago, I was one of the very lucky people who were able to screen it very early and so I've had a lot of time to think about the Batman and my thoughts on it. And I also rewatched the film the other day, just last week, so it's once again fresh in my head. And I have a lot of thoughts and obviously I don't want to go into heavy spoilers in this video, so I'm going to keep it relatively tame and my written review on discussing film is relatively tame. I don't think I discuss anything that's anything that hasn't been revealed in the trailer. Obviously I might make some slight hints towards something but I'm not going to reveal anything so don't worry about spoilers as we go into this review. But as you can probably tell, I loved the Batman. I was looking forward to this for a very, very long time. I remember when the first DC fandom trailer came out in 2020 during the summer. I think it was actually at that point that I kind of fell in love with the idea of this Batman film. And so here we are, and it is just as expected. It's excellent, it's incredibly atmospheric, it's brooding and it's actually very internalized. And I'll explain what I mean by internalized. At the core of the film's narrative, it is a murder mystery film. It is about a serial killer and Batman and Gordon go on this murder investigation after a slew of high profile killings at the hand of none other than the Riddler, who is brilliantly played by Paul Dano. And you have to remember that this marks the first Batman film well, solo film since The Dark Knight Rises, which this summer is going to be 10 years ago. So it's been a while and it's very refreshing to see Batman on his own and this Batman is great because it's inspired by Batman Year 2, Batman Along Halloween, I'm sure some of you guys have read those runs in the comics, but at the end of the day, it isn't a Batman Along Halloween adaptation or anything like that, or it isn't a Batman Year 2 adaptation. It's its own thing, but it's drawing on stories like that, and also other films like Zodiac, which is probably the most obvious connection that this film makes, and I know Matt Reeves has made references to it a lot of the time, especially because of the links between the Zodiac Killer and how the Riddler goes about his actions. So I love this kind of dark world that Matt Reeves creates, and I really do think it's the perfect world for Batman, because as I mentioned before, all of Batman's struggles and feelings are internalized and that is also shown through his narration because actually this Batman doesn't do a lot of talking. He talks when he needs to talk, but apart from that, a lot of it's kept with inside of himself and at the start and at the end, Batman bookmarks his progression as a person by checking in on his mission and his true goal because a big thing about this film is it questions what is Batman's true legacy? Why the cape and cow? What is the reason behind this? Why did Bruce want to step up and become something greater for Gotham? Now, as you've seen in the trailers, it's all about vengeance. That's where he starts off. He thinks he has to get vengeance for his parents. He has to protect the city from the criminals and he doesn't have much connection to the city's civilians, but this is something that he assesses as he goes on throughout the story and throughout everything that the Riddler puts him through, it makes him realize something about himself. And that is one of the best things about the film. I'm trying not to spoil it because I think it's a really, really great narrative arc that Batman goes on. And I'm specifically referencing Batman quite a lot, because a lot of this film is about Batman and his persona as a vigilante 
being the way that Bruce feels the most at home. So we actually don't see that much of Bruce Wayne because he isn't playing into this idea of him being a playboy and that's obviously a distraction especially in the Dark Knight films because no one would obviously expect Batman to be some billionaire playboy who cares about no one but really at the end of the day I think Patterson's Batman should at some point become that and use that kind of facade as this playboy to disguise him actually being Batman. So now let's talk a bit about Robert Pattinson. What do I think of Robert Pattinson? I think he's really good as Batman. He gives very good restrained yet sometimes explosive performance as Batman and he really embodies Batman and like the spirit of Batman. So his Batman is full of darkness. He's very restrained and lets little emotion out. But I think one of the best qualities of this version of Batman is his relationship with Jim Gordon, who is Lieutenant Gordon at this time, because they make a proper great crime fighting pair. So they are true partners, they are the only detectives that can be trusted in Gotham as they try and uncover Riddler's mysteries but also at the same time crack down on the underworld of Gotham and the corruption within it. So that relationship between them I think is actually one of the best things about the film and I do think it rivals Christian Bale and Gary Oldman's relationship as partners but they weren't really truly partners, they were kind of like acquaintances who once in a while crossed paths and had similar interests. But in this case, they are paired up as a kind of dynamic duo instead of Robin or anyone else working alongside Batman, it's Batman and Gordon. That is the duo in this film and obviously coming into the mix is Selina Kyle who is obviously quite troubled and she has her own reasonings for wanting to be involved which you'll see when you see the film but I really do think this film gets its detective side of its story really great it feels like a proper murder mystery it feels like something like Zodiac if you guys have seen it and also the Batman from the comics where he's trying to uncover the mysteries and say Batman Along Halloween, which is one of the best mysteries in DC Comics. So it's obvious when Matt Reeves thought, oh, I want to take it this noir kind of detective route, let's have a look at The Long Halloween because that is one of the best detective orientated comics that DC has. Also on a filmmaking level, I think it's really, really great. It's very beautiful to look at whilst also being very dark and grimy. Greg Frazier's cinematography really evokes the feelings and this kind of atmosphere and tone that is set right from the very start. There is some great scenes at the start paired with the film's incredible score that really hammers in the idea of Batman as this figure that Gotham's criminals fear because they look into the shadows and they see no one but they think Batman is there and that is the whole point of Batman at the start of the film as this kind of figure of vengeance, as this figure of the night that people are afraid of and that's exactly what Robert Pattinson's Batman is all about at the start of the film. So that pairing of the cinematography with the acting and the film score I think is probably one of the best examples of why this film is so good and you guys will know the scene because it's the scene at the start that people have been looking forward to from the trailers. I'm not gonna go into the exact details though. Let's talk a little bit about the film's action. Obviously as a Batman film there's gonna be a lot of fight scenes and there is a lot of fight scenes and they are great. They are really riveting and it makes you feel very involved, especially due to the camera placement and the way that everything is lit. It's really some top-notch filmmaking and every time Batman goes into a fight, he is very unhinged because of his vengeance with inside of himself. But then the way the camera moves, it's very visceral and it feels quite real and this is a big kind of element that the filmmakers have actually talked about a lot is wanting to make it quite grounded which something like The Dark Knight was and in this we have more extended fight scenes with Batman duking it out with a bunch of gangster criminals. Now let's talk a bit in terms of the writing. I think the writing is really good. I think Matt Reeves did a great job with the screenplay. I, like I said, really like the narration which is a tool that's used in film noir which has been said to be a direct influence on the Batman. So I love the scene at the start where it says fear is a tool. When that light hits the sky, it's not just a call, it's a warning. I feel like a lot of the dialogue really embody the Batman comics and the way that Batman is feared, especially in the darker comics. There is definitely this kind of ongoing fascination that we have as a viewer with Batman and with him 
trying to figure out this murder mystery and trying to get all the clues that the Riddler leaves and we kind of go with that and we finally get to the point where he's closer to the Riddler and then it becomes all very personal, which obviously ups the stakes and I think the stakes are really high in this film despite it feeling grounded when it does some things that it does it feels much bigger than it is because you're not expecting these huge things to happen, but it does happen actually, nearer to the end of the film. But this film definitely follows on from films like the Dark Knight trilogy from Christopher Nolan and also Joker in the way that it's told in the kind of darkness of it all, but also it's grounded in nature. And so I do think there is going to be at least a trilogy coming. I think it would be wise if they did that. And so this new trilogy would obviously be very dark, very brooding, and it would be great if we're basing off of this film. And there are teasers for future characters to show up and future things to happen, which I think we were all expecting, so I don't really count that as a spoiler. But just to recap, overall, my thoughts on it, the Batman is fantastic. I really, really loved it, and I highly recommend it to you guys. It's left me thinking about it for a long, long time. Like I said, I was lucky enough to see it very early on, and I was able to rewatch it, and there is so much to ponder and think upon as I think it's definitely a film of great depth and I think a lot of you guys will get a lot out of watching the film and will definitely want to go back for repeat viewing. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my review of the Batman. Also, please be sure to share this video around and tune in to my Batman coverage. I should have a Batman ranking video out later today, so be tuned for that. But for now, thank you guys for watching. You can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see room.